Wonderful. Hi. Hi, you made it. Hi, Dr. Trevino. I was trying to, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? But I got it. <laughs> Good, great. I'm sure it wasn't you. I'm sure it wasn't you. So what I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and get started since we're, okay. we're three minutes behind. And that wasn't all you, by the way, I was having my own tech issues with my uh, internet service provider. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick little introduction and then we'll let you get going, Dr. Trevino. So uh, welcome everybody. I see we've got some, we've got great attendance here um, so far. I'm just going to go ahead and share with you um, a little bit, and then we're going to let Dr. Trevino give us um, her experiences um, with regard to the curriculum planning and what she's been doing in her school district. I know you're anxious to hear from her. So let me just go ahead and start right here. Okay, Dr. Trevino, can you tell me what you're seeing there? Are you seeing that first slide? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. So again, welcome to um, this webinar today, this series that we have planned throughout the summer. I'm super excited to be here with you all um, for this summer curriculum planning series. Um, today's session is specifically named Finding Clarity in the Standards. So that's a little bit of what we're going to be um, looking at today and talking about is how to find clarity in those standards so that um, teachers are better able to connect standards, learning targets with the success criteria, um, all, of course, in an, in an endeavor and an effort to promote uh, student achievement, higher student achievement. And um, whoops, my thing's going crazy. So today for our learning intentions, I just highlighted um, a couple here, four actually. We are going to understand the impact that success criteria has on student achievement. We're also going to understand the progression of using standards to develop those success criteria. So what that progression can look like. Um, we're going to explore one option or template that I have for you. Um, it's just one option for building teacher capacity and using those standards to drive instruction all the way from planning to assessment and developing those great learning experiences. And then we're gonna hear from Dr. Trevino, um, a Texas district here. She is the chief academic officer um, as she answers that guiding question of how can meaningful learning be created using the standards. And so this is doc, This is my contact information. My name is Jennifer Knipp. I'm an account executive for Education Advanced and I work specifically with the Embark um, platform. And there's a little QR reader right there. If you wanted to scan that, you can set up a, um, a meeting with me and I'll try to remember to put this up later and you can directly contact me just by having that, that, that scan there. Uh, we can schedule a meeting real easily. And then Dr. Trevino, she has been a client partner of ours um, um, for this last year, a little more than a year, actually, I, I believe. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'll stop sharing Dr. Trevino and I'll let you um, address everybody and then I'll get back in. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Um, I, like you mentioned, I am Dr. Trevino from South Texas ISD, and it's, we are in South Texas. Um, we are a magnet school district. We are a public school district, but we serve the majority of 6th through 12th grade. We don't serve elementary students, and we are a uh, public school, but we are a choice school. Uh, and we're magnet because we, we have specialized campuses. So when I came on board as the chief academic officer, we wanted to make sure that our curriculum was based on um, learning standards. And we wanted to make sure that we had a viable curriculum and that it, it would reflect in student performance. So we began by contracting and partnering with J. McTie, uh, who is the one of the founders of Understanding by Design, which is the backwards design curriculum. We then were looking for who do we partner with? We wanted just the best of the best, and we wanted to post our curriculum somewhere where nobody could come and accidentally delete unit three, right? Which I'm sure Everybody who is in curriculum at a district, it's happened before and you have a backup to a backup to a backup. But Embark um, 
we we partnered with uh, Embark because Education Advance, we were already working with them with Test Town. And I happened to mention, oh, I'm looking for someone to host a curriculum. And they're like, we do that. And I'm like, okay, well, let's let's get on board. So it was a great partnership between uh, Jay McTie's team and Embark team. They were able to take all of the understanding by design framework and they customized Embark for us. And we told them, this is where we, this is what we need. And they said, great, we can build it for you. So that was one of the main um, things that we loved with working with Embark. So we uh, had, we had Jay McTie for a full week. He came and we had all of our teachers from PE coaches to general ed teachers. We had every teacher go through the framework of developing um, a scope and sequence and developing a curriculum that is based on standards. We developed units and our units included macro understanding, which is a bigger picture. We had in, it included the GRASP framework, which the GRASP framework includes what is the goal of the unit? What is the role of the student? What is the role of the teacher? Who's your audience? What is the situation? What, what is the product that you want from this unit lesson? Uh, and what are the standards that you are covering during the unit? And our teachers love the grasp because it, well, it grasps everything that you need, right? And it puts it, it puts it all together. And of course, we included other areas of which like vocabulary, prior learning, which is a big factor in understanding by design. What is what is the learning, the understandings and learnings that the students are already coming with be prior to this unit, prior to this uh, learning target? And what are those skills that we're focusing on? The misconceptions students may have during the sessions. Um, in addition, we wanted to do cross-curricular opportunities in writing and in, and in reading, just because if you're from Texas, we know that our assessment is changing in Texas and we are going to be having writing pieces and reading pieces in all of our state assessments that are going to be cross-curricular. So we at South Texas ISD got ahead of the game. They said two years ago, this may be coming. And we at South Texas ISD said, this is what we're doing. We're getting ready for STAR. And we started implementing that in both in our curriculum and in our assessments since two years ago. Um, in addition, so that's embedded in our curriculum. In addition to that, we have uh, technology integration. How are we going to use technology? What are the best tools? Um, we also have a performance task for the end of the school year. So what is this performance task going to look like? Uh, what is the summative assessment going to look like? And what are the unit materials and resources that I'm going to use for this particular unit? So that big macro is like the life of our curriculum. And then we included our topics, which are more descriptive, the standards, activities, resources, and things like that. So we, we had the teachers one week of understanding how to build a curriculum because we thought that was important. A lot of times, um, I've been in other districts and in, in a lot of times there's a misconception by teachers that curriculum is following a book from chapter one to chapter 10. And I just go chapter by chapter by chapter. And that is not what curriculum is. We, so we had to take our teachers through the process of what is a true curriculum and how do we, how do we gauge that major big understandings that our students need? So, um, that that required an investment from our district and we thought it was important that we invest in the best tools that are going to make a difference in the, in our students education which is our teachers so we made a, a huge investment and every teacher went through the, that week curriculum um, development that was the training then we had another week of actual curriculum development and our curriculum development was a little bit unique where we had every single teacher in our district was part of the curriculum development and it was in the summer and they received a stipend for that. So they had a week of developing curriculum with their 
district partners. So all the algebra, we, it took a whole campus, high school campus to house our teachers. And we had um, teachers were in rooms based on the content that they taught. So all my algebra one teachers were in one room. All my eighth grade math teachers were in another room. And they were collaborating and deciding what worked best, not just for one campus, not just for one teacher, but as a district. And um, how are we going to do this? We, it, it was a, it, um, a process, okay? When we started two years ago, we started with only the, the tested areas because we wanted to see how is this gonna work and what impact is it going to have, right? So we started with our tested areas two years ago and we did this process with only our tested areas, which is our, our star tested areas, right? Um, math, reading, social studies, our core, and it was only the core teachers and they were the only ones that went through the full process. When we received our star results this year and despite pandemic COVID, all, all of our tested areas jumped 20 points above the state and the region performance, uh, student performance in all of our um, content areas. So we saw that doing this process was impacting purposefully purposefully with our students. So we wanted to do it with everybody now. So that's why this, this past summer, we, like I said earlier, we housed all of our teachers from our PE teachers to our art teacher, theater arts, every single teacher participated in the process. And now we have um, a full embark with all of our curriculum from our tech teachers, our our health profession teachers and every single uh, curriculum is built in there with the same process of um, understanding by design. So the other part that our teachers love is that there is a common feedback component on each of the units and each of the learning tasks. So teachers write themselves notes and, and I love to go in there and just see and the teachers say, this was a great um, topic or this was a great uh, activity. However, next year, I would like to tweak it this way. So when they were doing curriculum writing, the, the, the tested areas this summer, when they were going through curriculum update, because they had already written the curriculum before, they, they were reading those comments and they were like, oh yes, we, we should add more time to this topic or we should move this topic before this other topic or in and, and there were so that you know sometimes you're teaching and you just forget by the end of the year you're like you forget what what you taught or the obstacles that you over that you had but that comment section is key because you won't forget it's already there so when they went through that curriculum development um it was instrumental for them to be able to make the updates that need and get everybody's input. It wasn't just one person making the decisions. So um, that is in a nutshell, what how we uh, handle curriculum development and that is standards based at our district and through the backwards design. Okay, wow, that was awesome, Dr. Trevino. Thank you for explaining all of that. You know, we didn't get together and talk about what mm -hmm. we were going to say today. We didn't we didn't plan any of that. And you hit on so many valuable points there as we start to talk about um, creating lessons and creating activities for students all based on the curriculum. So um, I love what you just said. I can't wait to talk some more with you. And if you'll hang on, what we'll do is we'll give our, our um, participants a, a chance to ask questions in just a little bit. Now we can't see them or, or hear them, but we're gonna, um, uh, hopefully they'll be able to offer up some questions maybe in the chat and we'll pay attention to that and, and see if they can um, glean any more great information from you about your processes. And I'm so happy to hear how successful it's been for you guys. So, um, okay, so thank you again. So we're gonna go ahead then and I'm gonna share my screen again with you guys and we'll move right on. Um, one thing that I loved um, hearing from you just now, Dr. Trevino, and I'm sure everybody else did, was the, the um, importance that you're placing on the teacher value and the input from teachers. 
Um, the teacher clarity is basically what you're talking about, clarity in not only lesson design, but in the curriculum itself, which is of course what we're gonna talk about today. Um, and just how you're starting with that curriculum framework um, to launch all the decisions and the next steps that you're taking in your district. So um, that, that's wonderful. So let me see here why this isn't advancing. There we go. Okay, so you also mentioned um, improvement of the curriculum, this cycle of, of improvement. And so um, I just included this little slide sort of last minute because I wanted to remind everybody when we're talking about this continuous cycle of improvement, typically we see this um, in play um, in really highly effective school districts. We're gonna see, of course, over here where we, we're gonna start with our standards and our curriculum. Our curriculum is gonna be based directly on those standards. Then it works through the planning, of course, the instruction and teaching as we go around this graphic. Student learning, of course, is taking place and then assessment. And then after that, we're, we're gonna be taking a look at the analysis. We're gonna be analyzing all of that data and the instruction strategy, instructional strategies that we use, the lesson design, all of that, all in an effort to improve our curriculum each and every year. There's always room for improvement. And of course, we're gonna be holding stakeholders um, uh, or, or communicating all of that with our stakeholders. But one thing that is definitely inherent and embedded throughout the entire process is the importance of the teachers. Uh, we know, there is no doubt, nobody on this, on this call um, is going to be able to argue that the teachers have to be a part of the process from the, from the get-go, from beginning to end. This continuous improvement is so important um, for the teachers to have a, a good understanding of every part of this cycle, from the standards all the way through to communicating it with stakeholders. So that's a common thread throughout this entire process. And really where that all starts is those things that Dr. Trevino just mentioned, which is teacher clarity. It's so important that our teachers understand where the students need to go and how to get them there, and then how to know whether they got there right. And so teacher clarity, um, some of the greatest learning that I ever um, encountered in my oh, in my time in, a, in the school district where I was director of curriculum and instruction um, is around that teacher clarity and John Hattie's work. So Hattie's work, of course, identified that teacher clarity has an effect size of 0.84. And in case you're, you have forgotten or are not familiar, anybody with that visible learning work, Basically what you see there on that barometer or that scale there rather is the sweet spot is the po is the point four zero and above of effect. So it's those strategies and those things that that are brought to a student's life in their in their academic years. Um, and those things that have the most impact or a high effect size on student achievement. And we know that teacher clarity ranks right up there at the very top anything point four and above through this comprehensive meta-analysis. And to my knowledge, there's not been another one done like John Hattie's work. Um, anything at, at point four and above is gonna help students accelerate um, a year or more. So they're gonna show growth of a year or more when we implement um, and focus on these things. And definitely teacher clarity ranks right up there. So uh, those three bullets that I put there, what, that, what we're talking about is teachers knowing what students need to learn, um, teachers being able to communicate learning intentions to the students. So what are our goals? What are our learning intentions? And then teachers and students understanding that success criteria. Um, and that's where we're going to look at today. We're going to eventually get into that success criteria. And by the way, when you pull out or filter out success criteria alone as, as something that is influential for student achievement, it has an effect size of 0.88. So it also ranks right up there um, when it comes to the student achievement. So what I'm offering here, this is, I'm going to put this in the chat, the link to this document. Um, and of course, if you can't open it for some weird reason, you can always um, just let me know, email me or call me later, um, and I'll make sure you get that. But it should be a shareable link to this. This is just one sample of a way that we can help build teacher capacity in this process of moving from the standards through to the success criteria and then beyond. This is only a snapshot around teacher clarity and what... Um, all right, hopefully that won't happen again. Sorry, guys. Um, so, of course, when we roll out this document, what we're looking at is the first step, which is to determine the priority standard. Uh, sometimes they're called power standards or, you know, heavy hitting, whatever you want to call it. So, by the way, this is not something that I would say you want to do with every standard. Of course, this is something to just help build teacher capacity and understanding the standards and what 
what they need to know, what students actually need to know. So we might offer this um, as an example um, during some summer PD. And then we ask teachers to go in and determine what those priority or power standards might be <clears throat> using your own instructional documents that you have in place which are, of course, can be housed right there in Embark and accessed in Embark, um, and also looking at test data. So those standards where students are, um, are, are weak in, but we know they're going to be heavily tested in, or even those standards that encompass a cluster or a bundle of standards together, they're going to have a huge impact. So we ask our teachers to first determine which standard they want to, they want to, you know, is the priority or the power standard that they want to work through the process. Um, and what we've shown is just that, like if, as though a teacher were going to write that here. And what we've chosen here is a very simplistic standard. It's 3.8B. Don't have my glasses on. Um, explain the relationship among the major and minor characters is what we're seeing there. Um, and so that would be the standard that they would write in. And then we just ask our teachers to go ahead and reflect on that for a minute and say, what do you think about that? What might students need? Just a off the cuff sort of gut reaction to the standard. Um, students will need to understand characterization and relationships in order to master the standard. And then it could possibly be bundled with 3.12, the composition of, of uh, narratives, composition of narratives, and 3.11, um, the actual writing process. Those are some areas that we might want to bundle together as we're starting to learn about this standard. And then um, step two is to actually deconstruct it. Nothing new here as far as deconstructing or unwrapping a standard. You've probably heard different terms for that. Um, and so, of course, we've got the skills and tasks that students are going to do in that box, which is explain, very simple. Um, and then the concepts, they're going to they're going to explain relationships among the characters and um, specifically the major and minor characters here. Um, then what we do in our district, we like to use the DOK levels, the depth of knowledge, Webb's depth of knowledge in understanding cognitive rigor. So it's important that our teachers also understand the cognitive rigor that are in the standard so that they can then um, follow that through in the instructional strategies and the assessment, whether it's summative or um, formative. And so we said that the DOK level one here for explaining the relationships would probably be a one. And then we rationalize that. We ask them to talk about why they think that's a DOK one. Same thing with the um, major and minor characters. They would put that as a DOK two. Explaining the relationship requires that students be able to yada, yada, yada. You can see that right there. So we then determine Determined that that's the DOK ceiling. We marked that as a DOK two. So that's the highest level of rigor that this standard is demanding with, is a DOK two. And that's important going forward as we start to design our lesson. All right, then what you see um, in, in the process next is going to be um, the learning progression. Oh, shoot shoot, is the learning progression. So this is where we take a look at the vertical alignment, um, grade level vertical alignment. So we know that in kindergarten, this is where what this standard would look like for our kindergartners, our first grade, our second grade. And then of course, we're in a third grade standard, so we didn't list it, but then we've got fourth and fifth. So we know it's important that teachers have an understanding of where students might be coming from and then where they might go or where they might already be. Um, they might already be above that third grade level. So we need to know, know that so that we can differentiate for them as we roll out our lesson design. Then we ask them to um, looking at steps and five, this is the key competencies. Of course, I just like to refer to learning targets. So what learning target can we identify based on that information that we already have? And I've listed those there. We know that the students must do these things in order to be able to master. They can identify the major and minor characters. And, and these are written as I can statements. I can explain the relationship among those. Again, this is very simplistic. Um, but we want students to be able to know what those learning targets are. And by the way, when we get down to this level, we encourage, and Hattie's research shows, Marzano's research shows, that doing this with students is going to help. That's going to actually promote their student achievement if they can actually um, help develop learning targets when possible. Um, so when you get back into the classroom and apply this there, that might be where you do that. Also then in step five, actually identifying that success criteria. So this is what our students going to absolutely have to be able to know and do in order Order to, to show and demonstrate mastery of this standard. So we've got the learning targets, but now we need to come up with success criteria. Do they need to be successful? High effect size of point, I think it was 8-8. Eight, eight. Again, let's do this with our students. We know that um, by looking at the standards and where they're coming from in that vertical alignment, 
um, we listed those criteria out. We're going to identify the characteristics and the traits that support their finding um, for a major character and a minor character, and then be able to give examples of that. So um, I wrote those in there as well. And that's super helpful for the next step, of course, which is then going to be, oh my goodness, to determine the assessment item. So this is going a little bit beyond just stopping at the success criteria that are needed. Now we're going to actually determine how we're going to assess students on it. Again, you could you could put in different you know, uh, options there for the assessment item. And we chose the extended constructed response. We actually have a place in our model for drafting that response item or that prompt. So we've written that prompt in right there. And then we actually included a rubric or a scoring guide. And this is all on what page just didn't fit it into the slide. So now we've gone a little bit beyond the success criteria because that just flows naturally into how are they going to be assessed. Again, this is something we would cover with our students for these heavy hitting major standards. And we've labeled ours the master's meets approaches and does not meet similar to the to what the state test might be. So again, this is just an ID that um, districts can use if they want to, as we help to build the capacity of our team. We're gonna give her some time to come back uh, online, but if you have any questions, you can start putting them in the Q&A. And if I'm able to answer those questions for you, um, we can do that at this time while we wait for her. Okay, so we have a couple of questions that came in. Oh, she's back. I'm so sorry. I was like, let's answer questions. Why I'm so talking? glad you did. I'm so <laughs> glad you did. It's okay. So the, um, I, do you want to continue with your presentation or do you want to go to the Q&A portion? Let's go with Q&A. Yes, ma'am. Let's go with Q&A. And meantime, um, I will, if these are questions for you, I'm going to go ahead and provide the link to that document in the chat while we... Well, we yes, and I think that was the first question is, can you please put the link to the using standards to create learning doc into the chat box? That Absolutely. was the first one. Okay. So the um, next question says, do you have teacher POCs to continue to monitor, update your curriculum mapping with power standards? And I believe that question is for me. And the answer is yes. All of our teachers have a common planning and they meet um, to plan and mon uh, monitor and edit our um, curriculum coordinators are also meeting with teachers at um, we we don't go by six weeks we go by quarters so quarterly they meet with the teachers and they go over the upcoming quarters curriculum they review the standards they review the power standards for sure and they review data to see how did um how did we perform because remember data is not just about students data is also about uh, delivery of instruction so they they go over um what are the standards that we need to focus more what did we do last year if this if the performance was slow, what are we going to do different at this time? And who performed better? Maybe there was another campus who performed better. And how can we incorporate what they did with our students and see if that works for our students? So there's a lot of collaboration, not only at the campus level, but it's also at the district level where teachers come together and they review and monitor their curriculum throughout the, throughout the year. It says, how much training was provided to teachers on using curriculum mapping software? Who provided the training? We They had continuous training. Embark provided the initial training for all of our curriculum writers and for our teachers. But we do have instructional technologists that, that are part of my CNI team. So they were also tasked with having continuous uh, trainings for the teachers at the campus levels. Um, okay, so I answered that one. Okay, I'm not sure how much longer this session was going to be. Um, I was just a guest, but if there's no more questions and I think she got kicked off again, um, I believe that she is going to upload everything to you. It says the subscription to Embark includes unlimited virtual trainings. Yes, they do. They're very supportive. Any questions you have, they will get on there. 
Um, like I said, when we were when we first started, they um, it, we had a, I guess a designer we could per se beat with me and they wanted to know what does your curriculum look like? We're gonna build it and we're gonna design it to your specific needs, which is what I love because we modified it and we needed, we made it look just the way it, what worked for South Texas ISD. It, it's not just a big white box that you, that you type into. So the, they have excellent support. Did you look at any other platforms? Why did you choose Embark? Yes, we did look at other plot platforms. One of the platforms we looked at was Edophoria. We use Edophoria for our data analysis with AWARE and we use it for our um, evaluation system. There weren't any other similar products other than Edophoria that will host your curriculum. So those were the only two that we looked like. And like I said, Edophoria is still lacking. I like the way that Embark is structured and the security level of it. In addition, I like that principals can engage and they can um, print and they can easily access what the teacher should be teaching at any given moment. Um, through through the report system. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this session. It was great um, meeting with you all, even though I only saw one in, uh, or you only saw me. But if there are any questions, my email was on there. You can email me, contact me. And if you wanna meet with me and learn more about what we did, um, or how we are using Embark, you're more than welcome to do so. And we, um, I'm sure Jennifer will be emailing you and contacting you with all the additional resources that she had. So you all have a great day. Thank you.